Hello and welcome. My name is Amber Robinson. For this special recording, I will be discussing a form of mental disorder called Dissociative Identity Disorder, or DID, formerly known as Split Personality Disorder. DID is a severe form of disassociation, which is a mental process that causes a disassociation or disconnection in a person's thoughts, memories, feelings, actions, or sense of identity. It is a coping mechanism which shuts down an individual's brain and disconnects them from an experience that is too violent, traumatic, or painful. Those most at risk are children in sensitive developmental years, most below the age of six. I interviewed a dear friend who we will call Brenda for this recording about her life living with DID. Brenda sustained extreme sexual and physical abuse at the hands of her father from as early as age three. We hope today's recording helps to destigmatize this rare and little understood disorder. In your own words, what is DID? DID is dissociative identity disorder. In other words, multiple personality disorder. It's just a new name. And uh, so in my own words, DID is pretty much um, a blessing and a curse. Not, um, the, the blessing is, uh, now I'm losing my train of thought. Um, the blessing is the personalities help me survive, you know, traumatic um, abuse. And, and the curse is like, the struggles I have to go through. Yeah. How long have you had uh, DID? I have no idea because I didn't know what was wrong with me. It's just one time in therapy, uh, I kept associating and, and my therapist was like, yeah, I think you have DID. I'm like, what the heck is that? And then she told me and I'm like, nah, nah, that, that can't be right. So it took me a while to even accept the diagnosis, but I've been this way as far as I can remember. What are some of the biggest struggles in having DID? Biggest struggles are ha I have no control sometimes over who comes out. And uh, like if I go out to a store or something and I dissociate, I could be a, a young kid or I could be an, an old, you know, bitch or I don't know if I can say that. Um, I mean, I know that you've talked to me about this one um, before. I mean, you've talked to me about all of these um, before, but how do, you, how do others react to you when they find out you have DID? I don't mind answering questions, but a lot of times they'll just get really nervous and not want to be around me because they don't understand it. Yeah. And so it's really hard to make friends because I don't trust being around too many people when they, because when they find out I have DID, that's when the friendship ends. Mm. And why do you think that? Do you think it's just because they're not sure they don't trust the other personalities or they're. I, I think they're uncomfortable with it. They don't understand it well enough. Yeah. And, you know, they think that, you know, I might dissociate into somebody really bad and, mm -hmm. and cause them harm or, yeah. you know, dissociate and just, just uh, um, them not un them not understand you know who who uh, which personality is which and so they either ask a lot of questions and and that's fine I don't mind answering questions it, it helps educate people yeah. because it's so misunderstood but there's a lot of times people just uh, get to know that I have DID and yeah. they just can't handle it um, yeah how do you wish others would react? I wish they would react like they just met a normal person, somebody that, you know, is is normal as far as personality wise and get to know me and maybe get to know the other parts and, you know, be supportive instead of, you know, just like walking away. And but, yeah, I'd like I'd like them to treat me like they were just meeting somebody, you know, in general. Um, so I was one of those people that had a lot of questions. I think sometimes right. like stop asking questions, Amber. <laughs> no, actually I don't mind, but sometimes I'll I'll start babbling about it because I'm so excited that someone is interested in it. <laughs> so it's it gets me it gets me, you know, excited at times and, and other times it's just, you know, okay, just that's enough. But not not with you. I don't mind answering your questions. I like to not educate you, but inform you. And I like to be informed. 
um, because you're my friend and I love you so. What do you call the others? Is there a special name you have for them and why? Yes. Um, I used to call the others just by their um, function. Yeah. And it was in therapy when my therapist said, give them a name to show them respect and and let them know that they're uh, supported. And so like with Johnny, mm -hmm. um, Johnny was known as the rebel. Yeah. And, and it was through him loving Johnny Cash <laughs> and the Johnny Cash song yeah. um, was Johnny Yuma, the rebel. Yeah. So that's how Johnny got his name. I love it. And then like Luna, Luna was known as the lunatic mm -hmm. and because she, you know, when she first started showing up in therapy, she was really a lunatic. I mean, that's the best way to describe her. Yeah. So that's how she got her name Luna. And it's just, they kind of got their names um, out of what their function kind of was. I know. I, when I first heard of Luna, the first thing that I thought about was the moon. You know, so I thought that she was like a noon child personality, and I still yeah that way. I was surprised when you told me what the real the real name was, the real meaning of the name. And I, I like I said, I still consider think of her as like a moon child. Um, and I remember you telling me that she um, enjoys cooking. Luna enjoys yes. cooking. Does she still enjoy she cooking? She does. Um, she's she's twelve years old, so she has to be kind of supervised in the kitchen. Yeah, but she lo she loves to bake more than cook. Yeah, uh, but she'll go in there and be like, you know, some other personality. It used to be Tracy, but Tracy comes and goes. You know, that's the way it is with DID. You know, they're not there all the time, and they can yeah. go away for a while. But yeah. Luna likes to go in and 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 bake stuff. What's Luna's favorite thing to bake? Um, cookies, chocolate chip cookies. Ooh, how did and do the personalities help you cope with life? Um, as you know, growing up, they helped me cope by shielding me. Yeah. They would take on the uh, abuse mm -hmm. and protect me from that. Mm -hmm. And now it's they they help me cope by some of the more positive ones can go out in public and and be positive in public and feel comfortable and. And, you know, as long as we don't talk about DID, be real friendly to people. And, and that, that helps me a lot. Yeah. Just help me, you know, be social. Yeah. There's been times um, when I've been around you that I have noticed you um, are, are more social and you seem different and you're handling questions, you know, in this like very like, you know, hip, cool <laughs> way. And I'm like, hmm, I wonder who that is. You know, um, so I can definitely, and I know that in the past you've told me that um, sometimes when you're meeting men for the first time, one of the male personalities will meet, come out and interact with men. Um, Correct. Yeah. Just to help you feel more comfortable right off the bat. Yeah. Yeah. Because I don't trust, you know, with all the abuse I went through, I'm not comfortable around men. So it's the personality, you know, Christopher, he's 20 something years old and and he'll hang out with with the guys and and uh, you know talk sports and get along with them. But with me, I, I'd rather not be there. But I feel comfortable as long as you know Christopher is is uh, out and about. That well, thank you to Christopher. Um, in what ways have they made it more difficult? Um. Well, not all of them are difficult. Some of them, are, some of them are really fun to be around. Um, but the more, the more uh, negative parts, they can be to where they have threats of suicide or self harm, and those are the ones that are really hard to. Um, I wouldn't say accept, but those are the ones that are really hard to work with. Mm -hmm. They don't want to negotiate or cooperate. Right. Yeah, you're like the mama trying to, trying to take care of everybody and get everybody to get along, you know, like a big family reunion. Okay. We're all going to be nice at the dinner table. Okay. Exactly. You're right. It's like having Thanksgiving here. Everybody's going to you know, start out. Okay. Friendly. And then all of a sudden they'll be like complaining about this and that and cause yeah. arguments. And it's just like, okay, you know, <laughs> go away, but they don't. My apartment is always full. How do you manage your DID and what is it like to manage all the others in your brain? And we kind of talked about it right then, um, but if you want to elaborate a little bit more. Um, 
let's see. Managing DID, you know, it, it can be tricky because like I said, you know, I don't have control all of the time. Mm-hmm. And one thing is it's it's not just that they're in my brain. Mm-hmm. They actually have this this outward, you know, they they don't connect with my body so much, you know, like like Johnny, you know, he feels like a guy. Yeah. And it's not just um it, it's not just internally. You know, they feel that way, you know, with the way they present themselves. And so it, it's tricky because, uh, like I said, I don't have control all the time. Yeah. If there was one thing you'd want to make sure everyone knew about DID, what would it be? Um, the DID is real, you know, it's not a made up um, diagnosis. Mm-hmm. It's, it's very rare. It's, it's, you know, a unique to have it um but yeah i mean i would want people to understand that yeah it's real and i'm not walking around with some psychopath you know personality you know i'm not going to be all homicidal and freak out it it's you know a lot of that negativity is is, is maintained within so yeah. yeah i mean i would like people to know that it's it's a real diagnosis and it's absolutely real it's not it's not just just me acting different parts yeah and I don't know if you, you know who the football player is, Herschel Walker. He was a Heisman, Tro- yeah, Heisman Trophy winner. Mm-hmm. He has DID, and I was really shocked. Really? And he wrote a book. Um, it's, uh, let's see, I wrote it down. It's called Breaking Free, My Life with Associative Identity Disorder. And he was able, he was, you know, a professional football player, you know, was excellent in college to win the Heisman Trophy and, so that when I read that book, it gave me it gave me encouragement that even though I have DID, I I can function in society. It's challenging, you know, a lot of the times to where I'll isolate a lot because I don't know when you know certain parts will come out. But it was very uh, powerful to read that book and and realize that oh my gosh, you know, he was able to to do the things he could be managing DID and talked about the challenges he had because he's, he was like me. He didn't know what was going on. Yeah. Um, it's just, I, I thought it was normal and it's like, okay, I dissociate. It's like, Oh no, you have DID. And no, I just feel like different people. Well, that's DID. I'm like, Oh, okay. <laughs> like, no, everybody feels this way. And I yeah. Guess. Seriously. I thought it was, I thought it was normal. Yeah. I really did. Brenda, how many personalities would you say you have? Right now, there's like 11 um, active, mm-hmm. but there's around 20 that I that I'm kind of aware of. Yeah. Some of them, some of them I don't know, but I kind of hear about them. Yeah. So it's I don't know, like at times if some personality come out and I have no idea, you know who it is, and there there's a lot of blackouts where you know yeah. things will happen and I'm not aware that it's happening. Yeah. And that, that can be challenging, but yeah, there's 11 active ones that are, that are, um, frequently around. Yeah. That's so interesting is that you hear about them. So, so like, so from the active 11, like through the grapevine kind of, they're like, there are other others. Yeah. I mean, it's like, you know, for example, I've already mentioned the name Johnny Mm -hmm. and he talks about, you know, different people that he, I guess, hangs out with yeah um I mean I know he'll hang out with with like Daniel yeah and so I know about that and it's Mm -hmm. it's you know the personalities they come in like you know twos Mm -hmm. um one will experience a certain uh type of trauma Mm -hmm. and it'll be too traumatic for even them to where it's almost like they dissociate into another personality oh wow that's very multi-layered. I was never aware yeah. of that. So it's like the personalities revert to personalities to, to cope and help. That's right. Amazing. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. I mean, it, it's like, um, you know, about uh, Tony and Mikey. Yep. Um, the, the two that it's really crazy. You know, they feel like POWs and obviously I've never been a POW. But it was just from the trauma of, of childhood, my dad um, playing out the, the war games and, and treating me like a POW and then dissociating the Tony. And then that got too intense. 
and yeah. Tony dissociated into Mikey. Wow. So it, yeah, it, it comes in layers. That's incredible. It's amazing how the brain works um, to protect us in the moments where we need it. So, right. Like I said, I'm thankful for your others. And then um, I wanted to ask you, uh, I know that you have a special name for all of your others, a conglomerate name um, for all of your others. Will you tell everybody what, what that special name is? Yeah, it's the Wolf Pack. The Wolf Pack, I love that. Yeah. Um, and then can you, tell, can you tell us why? Why you chose the Wolf Pack? Um, well, as a kid, we went on vacation and we went to this wolf sanctuary mm -hmm. and this one little wolf pup was wandering around like it was lost and it came up to the fence and came up right to me at the fence. And I just felt that really strong connection. I was probably about five or six and I felt that really strong connection. Like I could relay, you know, walking around and feeling lost. So all of us together is the wolf pack.